Hey, and welcome to another video. Uh, yeah, I'm handheld, so please uh, comment down below how much you hate the non-stabilized version of this video. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but just for two minutes, I just wanted to quickly pop in before I start the video properly on the subject of uh, panoramas. And just, uh, just again, say big thanks. My uh, YouTube channel has reached 2,500. I want to hear from you, some of you boys and girls, so uh, drop me a comment down below, like this video. Uh, let me know about yourself and your photography, what you do, where you go. Ask me some questions. I like to answer questions now and again and uh, give me an idea of what kind of photography you want to see me doing in 2020. Here's the intro. Hopefully when you get back, you'll be on a tripod. See you in a bit, bye. My name is Andy Hornby, photographer and vlogger. 17 years ago I started teaching myself photography. Today, I travel the UK as a professional wedding photographer, landscape photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, my mistakes and my tips and advice. You see the pier is behind me. I wasn't going to come down to the pier, actually I was going to go to Canoe Lake, but actually my girlfriend's son said, why don't you get down the pier and take some nice pictures of the clouds going past the pier. So do you know what? This is all down to Dylan, thanks mate. It's a good idea. We're going to get some awesome pictures and the time lapse hopefully is going to look pretty good. The sea is coming in, so I might lose my camera at some point. Hopefully I'll keep an eye on it and move if I have to and start again, but I think I got close enough to the waves where it's going to shoot for about 20 minutes. The waves might encroach around the base of the of the tripod hopefully doesn't ruin my new tripod and we'll be all right anyway this video is about panoramas like a drama panoramas panoramas the reasons why you might want to use your camera set up like a panorama you know what you can do with your phone you go like that you take a panorama the phone does it you can actually do that with your camera and use lightroom very very easily hang around because i'm going to show you how to do it in lightroom very easily with a few clicks to stitch them together into panorama now i may have uh, misjudged that let me just check see how long it's got Done 77 of 400. That's not good. I think that's coming a little bit faster than I expected it to. But never mind. It's not. Wouldn't be the first time I've had my tripod in the water. Anyway, so panoramas. Panoramas are awesome. You may not have a wide-angle lens on you, so you might have a wide-angle lens, but want to use a non-wide-angle lens and get a panorama for a very good reason. You saw me earlier do a panorama with my 24 to 70, and the reasons why I want to do that is because of compression. I want to make the pier look closer than it would do if I took just a wide angle lens and just shot it. I've got a 14 mil in my bag, I could have used that, got the whole of the pier in and got the same composition, but if I use a 24 to 70, zoomed in slightly, I was at about 33 mil I think, somewhere around there, and stitched those together, the pier is gonna actually look a lot closer compared to like the foreground and the, and the clouds in the background. The pier is going to have that compression, it's going to be look absolutely amazing. Now, that's a really good lens as well, so you might not have a wide-angle lens, or you might have it and not use it. And that's why I sometimes use my 24-70 to on landscapes and do a panorama. Today we're going to do something a little bit special, because it is a panorama, but it's actually an extreme panorama. So I've actually taken a panorama of the pier, and a good rule of thumb is to shoot just past and right the way round to about there, if you can see that in camera. But I've also done the foreground and the sky as well. So we've got an extreme panorama, three layers of panorama, and we're gonna push Lightroom to its limits. Hopefully, it will stitch all of them together. Now, I've had hit and miss with this before. Well, it doesn't always stitch all of them together. Sometimes you might have to crop the ends off and just use the sets. But I'm gonna show you how to do that very simply later in this video, so don't go anywhere. Here's a few tips when you're doing panorama. Obviously you want your tripod to be steady, you want it on level ground, and you want to be able to move it around, so you want a nice flow function on the ball head. If you've got one, that'd be fantastic. Don't worry too much, you can be handheld doing this. I've shot a lot of handheld vertical panoramas in churches, I do a lot of churches. You can't always take a tripod in the church, so sometimes you'll be there, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. and those ceilings in the churches make for a really, really good vertical panorama right the way up. And I've done the handheld, stitched it together in Lightroom, does a really good job. You might mess around a little bit with distortion, because you will get a bit of distortion, especially when you're on a wide angle lens. Not so much on the 24-70, another reason why I might use 
the 24 to 74 panorama because the distortion is just so much less it's actually a really really good lens for landscape yeah you so obviously want your camera to be level on the tripod spinning it around so it's nice and level otherwise you might get a little warped especially when you're doing a seascape you get a warped horizon that could look pretty awful and you might have to take your picture into photoshop to correct it but the other thing as well shoot past where you need to because if you are shooting on a wide angle lens to do a panorama the edges are going to be distorted so what you do is shoot even further so if i was shooting the pier here i'd actually shoot further around and get some of the buildings up the top there in and when i'm shooting a bit further around here i'll shoot a bit further than i need to that way as well just so i can crop in later to get rid of the distortion then it's not an issue and the other rule of thumb which is probably one of the most important things to think about when you're doing panoramas is make sure you've got enough of the previous image in the next image so those images as you take them they actually overlap if you don't do that Lightroom won't have enough information to take from the previous image and put it onto the next and do its little magic trick and uh, put them together the general rule of thumb is about 30% sometimes I even take that up to about 50% so 50% of the image before is in the next image and then Lightroom will have absolutely no trouble whatsoever stitching those together later and that's pretty much it really simple it's all really down to the editing but the editing is not difficult don't think it's difficult if you've got Lightroom it does an absolutely fantastic job a few clicks and we're going to show you that in a minute i'm going to show you how to stitch them together and then i'll do a full edit on this composition that you've got behind me now which is actually really really nice the sun is about to hit the horizon over the back there let me check the time i've got about 15 minutes before sunset actually hits the horizon so at the moment it's behind the pier i'm hoping to have my time lapse if it doesn't sink I actually have the sun go beneath the pier and on the horizon you've got to see it beneath the, ble the bleachers down there hopefully if that worked you may have already seen in this video i don't know if it has worked i probably used it at the beginning so yeah so thumbs up for that nice i'm gonna get back to this but don't go anywhere because in a minute we are going to see the edit so try and follow along stop the video it really isn't difficult don't make it difficult for yourself all you've got to remember is that lightroom does all the work for you if you do like this video please whack a thumbs up that's going to help remember to leave me a comment down below tell me about your photography tell me what you want me to be doing in 2020 please subscribe if you haven't done so already hit the notification bell so you get updates every time i upload a video i got a lot coming next week we're going to be talking about bracketing hdr that kind of stuff and then the week after that we are going to go extreme with hdr panoramas yeah that's the thing and that's uh, again it's really simple lightroom does a really good job of stitching together hdr panoramas but look out for next week for the hdr stuff and the bracketing video because uh for those of you that don't potentially have the best cameras out there or you have a crop sensor bracketing is always an option for you uh there are ways in camera to do it automatically you can also do it manually and i'm going to show you that next week so stick around for the edit for this one i'll see you on the next video take care bye Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed my time lapse. If you did, please whack a thumbs up on the video. That'd be fantastic. And you'll see at the bottom there are all of the pictures. There's 16. I've got four, sorry, five uh, for the middle. Just going through them. Another five for the top and then six for the ground. Just make sure I've got a lot of information in the ground pictures only because there are a lot of uh, stones. So I've got six of those. Uh, just meant I've got more information for Lightroom to deal with. I like them all. And the only edit I'm going to do is uh, just lens correction. Just gets rid of the little vignette. It does mean that when you uh, sync them all across. Look, I'm going to copy that and sync, sync them across. When you stitch them together, you don't have black lines down the middle. Sometimes Lightroom will add the vignette sort of part of the image into the next image and you get some black lines sometimes just going through them once again make sure that the, all the vignette is gone they look pretty good so all we're going to do while they're all highlighted is right click if you're on a mac that's two fingers on a mac photo merge and then panorama we're going to wait a little while just here i'm going to fast this bit forward And there you have the stitched image together. You can see my horizon is off. Uh, you can see it was off actually looking at the pictures before, but that's fine. I'm going to show you how to easily straighten that up in Photoshop in a second. We're going to do a little bit of editing 
Lightroom first, take it across to Photoshop and we'll be set. Honestly, it's not difficult to hang around and I'll show you how to do that. So here all I'm going to do is check to see if uh, any of the other projections give us anything better than what we've got already. Uh, it does take a little while for Lightroom to get them and there's not much difference to be fair, it's not going to make much difference. If you really wanted to, you can auto crop here if you wanted to. Uh, uh, you can re-warp or sort the boundary warp which just pulls the information out to the sides. I'm not actually going to use that in this picture, I'm going to take it into Photoshop anyway so I'm going to use Content Aware to fill those areas in and I'm going to do my own crop anyway so I'm not too worried. So we'll auto crop it, I think in this case we'll actually we'll just leave it and uh, wait a few seconds for Lightroom to render that. And there it is, uh, in all its glory, let that just come through. This file now is massive, don't forget, we've stitched 16 images together, so it's going to be quite big. Even my machine, which is uh, top of the range uh, MacBook, is uh, struggling a little bit. I'm going to have a go at the straightening tool in Lightroom, see if that does anything for us at all. Hit a few of these sliders, see if anything will help us out. Not a huge amount of difference, to be fair, it's not going to do a whole lot. We can use the uh, uh, level on this to see if it'll bring us back. See if that'll do anything. Uh, it's straightened the horizon up, but it's still curved. So we've got a horizon that's now level, if you like. Uh, but it is still curved. I'm going to use Photoshop in a second. Hang around. Really simple in Photoshop. Don't worry. So before I take it into Photoshop, I'm going to do a quick edit. I just want to get the basic adjustments done first. This is going to be different for everybody. My picture is going to be different to your picture. Uh, you can potentially follow along to some of the things I'm doing here. I'm opening up the shadows, bring down the highlights messing around with the whites and the blacks I'm going to do a little bit of stuff with the texture probably bring the texture down a touch, clarity up, maybe a little bit, it's going to lighten the light areas, give it some uh, punch and then a bit of dehaze, love the dehaze slider and a bit of vibrance I'm going to bring the blacks up ever so slightly, give it a very slightly washed out look in the blacks Slight S curve there, look. A bit more, maybe. Sharpness, I'm going to add some sharpness to it. I'm just going to mask that sharpness to about 50%. Uh, maybe slightly more. Just hold down the Alt key and you'll see what you're sharpening. Everything that's, that's white, you're sharpening. Everything that's black, you're not sharpening. It's like a mask. Uh, white reveals, black hides, that kind of stuff. Uh, add a little bit of uh, vignette back. We might do that later, in fact. Don't do that just yet because I'm going to fill these corners in. Now I'm going to take it into Photoshop. So uh, edit in Photoshop, whichever version you've got. I've got 2020. Hopefully, you've got the same one. If not, uh, you should be able to do most of these adjustments that you're going to do uh, yourself. Here we are in Photoshop. You'll see that the corners are white. That's the, the bits that were cropped out. Uh, we are going to fill those in a second. We're just going to create a new layer. That top layer we're going we're gonna to turn into a smart filters object. Uh, so anything we do here and now, we might be able to adjust later. It's just a way of working non-destructively. We've got the bottom layer as our original layer that's not going to be touched. This second layer is we're just going to turn to a smart object. It's taken a bit of time because this is a big file, don't forget we've got 16 images all stitched together this thing is huge there goes now smart filter, so we're going to actually go down to uh, lens, not lens correction, cancel that uh, we're actually going to go into the adaptive wide angle okay so this is actually really really easy, we're going to choose a point on the horizon come over to the other side, find the other point on the other side, and I'm not adding that curve, uh, Photoshop is doing that curve itself, and it's actually just going to straighten the image out. Looks like the image is now slanted, but the horizon is straight, so that's a good thing. We can use the uh, transform tool to straighten or correct the angle of the picture. So let me reiterate that the 
angle of the horizon has now been straightened so it's not curved but the picture does appear to be on a slight slant down to the right we're gonna deal with that in a second once my computer catches up there we go it's actually brought in the side so control T and we can just straighten that ever so slightly still looks like it's on the warp that's because don't worry once you click OK uh, it's gonna straighten the horizon again I'm going to do a little bit of a selective crop in a minute anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. The left-hand side there looks a bit wonky, ever so slightly, looks like it comes up a little bit. But we're going to crop in a little bit in a second. Go for a 16 by 9 crop, that's my normal sort of landscape photography crop. And uh, that will sort that out, so don't worry too much. But we have to straighten the horizon. It is now straight. You have to imagine that sometimes stitching these images together, you will get a little bit of a bump. That's why seascapes with... Uh, panoramas is really often quite difficult unless you're dead straight and dead level on your tripod you will sometimes have issues so bear that in mind a straight horizon is always going to be difficult to get I'm actually going to open up uh, the uh, top and bottom here just a little bit you see I'm going to add a little bit to the top and bottom I'm doing that for a reason because I want to go for 16 by 9 crop but it's at the moment it's two panorama looking for me so I'm going to actually content aware fill so let's sort that out it's really pushing my computer to the limits okay so now we've got a lot of spare top and bottom bits and pieces that we actually want to content aware fill this is going to be really easy when it catches up come on catch up Okay, so here we are. We now have uh, a little bit extra at the top, bottom, and I'm actually just going to uh, select these areas a bit more uh, wider than you need to. So you don't have to do too much, but I'm just going to make sure that my selections go a little bit past into the picture itself. That means the content aware is going to do a good job of finding areas in the picture that it wants to fill these in. And it's going to be slow. Let's go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. If you've got 2020, you've got this. If not, you can hit the backspace and choose Content Aware Fill. Uh, it does a similar thing, but this gives me more uh, control. I'm actually going to take out the areas in the middle of the image uh, that I don't want it to select pixels from. So anything that's not in green, it won't use to fill the areas up with. Ah, uh, voila! Look at that on the right hand side there, does a really good job at just filling those areas in slightly. Uh, no big deal, one click. And there you have it, very simple, very easy, a couple of clicks, and we filled in those areas very nicely. Control D to get rid of the marching ants, and we'll bring it back into Lightroom. Let's do that, so just save it. However you want to save it, I just uh, Command S or Control S. And here we are back in Lightroom, and there it is. Uh, we can now do some more edits if you want to. I'm going to edit this a bit, bit, a teeny bit further. You don't have to. That's pretty much the end of the video. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's uh, tuned into this video. You guys are absolutely amazing. I'm going to go through and do some more bits and pieces and leave the music on for you. If you want to hang around, that would be fantastic. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please slap a thumbs up on it. If you uh, haven't followed me so far on YouTube, please do so and hit the notification bell so you get updates every time I upload a new video. That would be awesome. You guys are amazing. Please comment down below. Let me know how you like this video. Let me know if you've got any ideas you'd like me to do. If you've got any places you'd like me to visit and take a look at and see if I can get some uh, uh, great images from maybe your hometown. Uh, just let me know in the comments down below. That'd be fantastic. I'll try and answer all the questions I get. Please keep them constructive. I get some silly questions sometimes. Yes, the beginning part of this video was a little shaky. That's because I was handheld, walking pretty fast, down to the pier, and it's just shaky. So I apologize, uh, but it is what it is. So thanks very much. This video is going to continue running. Uh, please slap a like. Like I said before, that's going to help me massively. And I'll see you boys and girls on another video soon. Take care. Bye. Every day I'm looking for a way to return to the time.